So now continuing our discussion on core dates, we're going to entitle the next flowchart Core Dates 3 and move forward from the basal vertebrate clades that we've established, hagfishes and lampreys, and now continue our development as chordates. What I, mean what I mean by development is continue our increasing of complexity as we move down the chordate phylogeny, the chordate evolutionary history in other words. So the next logical progression of chordates from that hagfish and lamprey uh, basal clade is going towards the fact that you originally are without jaws. Remember I said that was a key characteristic of those two. Now we're going to have jaws. And these are going to be those organisms that are classified as nathostomes or nathostomata, whatever you want to call it. Nathostomes literally translates to jaw mouth. Jaw mouth. So those organisms that are chordates, that are vertebrates, that have natho, which means jaw, stone means opening, but in this case we'll just mean, have it mean mouth. Same idea here. So what does this include? This includes things that have a hinged jaw. Okay, so a jaw is only seen in nathostomes and thereafter. It's not seen in anything before, aka hagfishes and lampreys are the only things without jaws, the only vertebrates without jaws. Um, that's our nathostomes, hinged jaw. Here we're going to increase complexity, so we're going to have four sets of those very important developmental Hox genes. So we are more and more complex. Makes sense because now we have a nice complex jaw to work with. Now within the nathostomes, there is a basal clade to remember, meaning a clade that's going to give rise to everything afterwards that is nathostome or nathostomic in its description. And the basal clade here are known as chondrichthyes. Chondrichthyes. Okay, we're still in the water actually, and chondrich here is literally going to, first of all, I'll write down aquatic, still in the water, where you have not moved to land just yet. Hold on. This chondrich root simply is referring to the fact that we have cartilage. And cartilage, again, I said is old. It means it's probably an older animal, an or older vertebrate. Uh, and, and that's exactly right here. This is going to be a cartilage skeleton. That's literally what this sort of means. The chondrich, these are those that have an entirely uh, entire skeleton made of cartilage. Thus, they are cartilaginous fish. Cartilaginous fish. Cartilaginous, whatever you want to call it, fish. Things like sharks and rays. So sharks and rays, everybody's pretty much familiar with those, hopefully. Those are very ancestral chordates because they are the next progression from the most ancestral vertebrates, the hagfishes and lampreys. Now we have sharks and rays of the chondrichthys, which are the basal clade of those chordates that not only have a vertebrate, but actually also have nathostomes, okay, that have the jaws. So everything here actually, you can actually subtitle this, I guess, vertebrates as well, okay, because these are all vertebrates that we're doing here. What's next after the nathostomes? Next is going to be the progression towards bone. Not cartilage anymore, but bone. And that's why we're going to label the next group of animals, the next clade, the ostichthys. Okay, the ostichthys. Okay, here, what do we have? We have now the transition from a cartilaginous skeleton of cartilage to a bony skeleton. That's the osti part of this word is the idea that we have a bony skeleton, okay? This bony skeleton is a hard matrix, meaning that it is a complex group of things that's going to give us this overall bone structure. Specifically, this matrix will mostly contain calcium, not carbonate now, but calcium phosphate. First time we're seeing this, thus it's probably important that calcium phosphate is seen for the first time in ostichthys. Now, another thing about the ostichthys that is very important to understand is the presence of lungs. Now, you got to be thinking, why would lungs be necessary? Right now we're in water, right? When we have lungs, this is going to allow for the supplement of gas exchange. Lungs are going to be good to help out the gills, let's say, in gas exchange within the water. So supplement, gas exchange, supplement just means help to increase uh, efficiency. I supplement your lectures with these videos essentially, right? Hopefully I'm not replacing your lectures. This is going to supplement gas exchange by gills. So the gills are still the primary form of gas exchange in ostichthys, thus we're still looking at 
fish, thus we're still looking at aquatic organisms, but we're getting a little closer to something that's not aquatic because we have these weird things called lungs that are going to also help out with gas exchange. More on that later. Now, finally, last thing, the basal clade, the oldest osteichthy to remember that all osteichthys follow from is the, and I do not know how to pronounce this correctly, but I'll try my best, the actino, I think this is silent now, terges, actino terge. okay, so that's what the basal clade is, know that name, basic idea here, we're still aquatic, so we're still looking at fish, and these are ray-finned fish. That's the specific type of fish that we're looking at, ray-finned fish. Classic examples of this are things like trout, tuna, and I think salmon as well. Yes, salmon. All of which classify as actinotergy. Okay? So these are bony skeleton fish. So we've gone from cartilaginous skeleton to a bony skeleton. We also have these lungs. These are going to come very useful a little bit later. And now finally, of these vertebrates, uh, in chordates 3 at least, we have the progression from bony, uh, cartilaginous to bony to now also lungs. Now something called lobe-thinned fish. So this is another group of vertebrates, of very old vertebrates that are still aquatic in nature. Okay, These are going to be organisms that have muscular fins or limbs. This is getting weird now. You should be noticing something. You're putting all this effort, this evolutionary effort, this evolutionary drive towards something like limbs and muscular fins. There must be a reason why. Now the direct reason is that this increases locomotion, increases the capability to move, but these limbs are going to be useful in an environment specifically. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but we're going to continue evolving towards something. And there's a big goal that we'll see as we move forward. Our basal clades here, there are two to remember. So the things that all lobe fin fish come from are the, and I don't know how to say this also, the actinistia, I think. Okay, these are all going to consist of specifically the coelacanths. Okay, just some names to remember, I guess. And also, this is the one I think that's really important because we have something known as dipnoi. Okay, um, this is this root of new. Uh, this actually so dinu I think is actually how you say it, not dipnoi. Not 100% sure, but this root of first of all, di means two, and whenever you see the root p n e u or p n o i, this is referring to the lungs. Okay, so pneumonia is an infection of the lungs, right? So dipnoi is going to be those fishes that are actually called lung fishes. This makes sense because it's a logical progression from the ostiches which have these basic lungs. The lung fishes are going to be those that have more advanced lungs in addition to their gills. So we're continuing this story of lungs for a reason. Why are we having this? This is because the dipnoi or the dipnoi, whatever you want to call it, are actually going to be the sister group of a very important group of chordates that we're going to get to right after this, the sister group of you and I, which are tetrapods. Okay, Tetrapods, uh, this is going to be referring to the fact that we are utilizing these limbs for a very important purpose that we'll get to in the next video. These are our logical fish progression, let's say, within the water of the vertebrates. Uh, Nathostomata is also a vertebrate, uh, the ostichthys, and then the lobe fin fish. All of this is going to be a transition out of water, hopefully into land, which we'll see in the next couple of videos.